you are a student and doctors of physical therapy at Arkansas Colleges of Health Education. Today we will demonstrate how to appropriately administer the Thomas test. The Thomas test assesses hip flexor length and distinguishes tightness between one joint and two joint muscles. Physical therapists will position the patient standing with their gluteal folds against the edge of the table for test reproducibility. The patient will grasp the unaffected leg and bring it to their chest. The physical therapy student is positioned different for video viewing purposes. The physical therapist will support the patient's thoracic spine or shoulder and contralateral leg, laying the patient into supine. In supine, the physical therapist will ensure the non-test thigh is perpendicular with the table and the hip is flexed to 90 degrees. The patient will maintain this position. While supporting the test leg, the physical therapist will palpate the patient's ipsilateral ASIS. The physical therapist will apply a posterior superior stabilization force to the ASIS. This stabilization force ensures the pelvis maintains a neutral position. If the pelvis is not stabilized and moves into an anterior tilt, it may appear that the hip flexors have an appropriate length, giving a false negative. The physical therapist will then slowly lower the leg to neutral before allowing the patient to actively extend to their end hip range of motion. After testing, the physical therapist can assist the patient to a sitting position and can test the opposite side. The physical therapist can differentiate between what muscles are shortened based on the positioning of the hip and knee at the end of the test. Interpretation of the Thomas test. When the hip flexors are a typical length, meaning the test is negative, the posterior thigh will touch the table and the knee will flex approximately 80 degrees. With shortness of both one joint and two joint hip flexors, the posterior thigh will not touch the table and the knee will extend. With shortness of two joint hip flexors, the posterior thigh will touch the table and the knee will extend. With shortness of one joint hip flexors, the posterior thigh will not touch the table and the knee will flex greater than 80 degrees. Shortness or tightness of tensor fascia lata will result in abduction of the thigh as the hip extends along with lateral deviation of the patella. With tightness, there will also be internal rotation of the thigh and external rotation of the leg on the femur. Shortness or tightness of sartorius will result in hip abduction, flexion, and external rotation. Tightness of sartorius can also cause knee flexion. A combination of three or more of these signs indicates tightness. This information is listed in the interpretation table with descriptions on the various presentations and the specific muscles involved.